Today we're going to discuss the great Czechoslovakian composer Antonín Dvořák. In our previous lecture, we looked at the emergence of nationalism in music in the late Romantic period, and we saw how Smetana was the first one to forge a distinctive bohemian national identity in music. Following in his footsteps, Dvořák continued this quest to create a national Czech musical culture. But we'll see later on, he was also the father of the American, or at least one of the pioneers in the creation of a distinctively American style of music. He was from a humble background. His father was an innkeeper and a butcher in a small place in Czechoslovakia, in a small town in Prague. And he worked in his father's shop. At the age of 16, he left to go and study music. His music was not well known. Interestingly, Brahms was the one to bring his music to the public's attention. Brahms appreciated his talent. After that, he became quite a sensation. He was very favorably accepted in England. In 1892, he went to New York, where he became the director of the National Conservatory of Music. They uh, commissioned him to write several works. And in the process, he tried to discover a way to create an American style of music. He looked at the various musical elements that formed the fabric of the society. There were the African spirituals, the Native American tunes. He took elements from all of these, the use of the pentatonic scale, the blues elements, the, the, the spirituals, and he put it all together along with other elements. And what emerged was what he believed was an American style of music. He believed that the Americans deserved to have their own style. He saw America as a brave and newly emerging country and that they deserved to have a style of music which they could call their own. In 1895, he returned to Czechoslovakia. There were some disagreements regarding his payments in America. Not everything panned out exactly how he wanted. But all in all, he had been a success. He had done a lot of good for the cultural society there. And returning to Prague, after several years, he once again resumed the role of music director. Today, we're going to look at his Ninth Symphony, the very famous and much-loved New World Symphony, premiered in 1893. The work has an E minor, but it does fluctuate between the minor and major mode. We're going to look at the various elements of the work in more detail. Dvořák wrote his New World Symphony during his first year in America. He invested it with both an American and a Czech folk spirit. The work contains syncopations, the use of pentatonic scales and modal scales. Its orchestration is lively and it has distinctively melodious thematic material. The work has four contrasting movements. These are unified through the reappearance of the same themes in the first, second and third movements. The finale it calls themes from all three movements. In the first movement, the beginning part is marked adagio. It comprises of a slow introduction. This is followed by the exposition marked allegro molto. This movement is in sonata form, in duple meter, and in E minor. The slow introduction presents an ominous motif. This is followed by an energetic allegro. The exposition has three themes. The first theme begins in the minor mode. It is a syncopated arpeggio motif, which features throughout the whole work. The first part of the theme consists of the arpeggiated figure played by the horns. The remainder of the theme consists of a dotted rhythm motif played by the woodwinds. The second theme is in the minor mode and is dance-like. It is gentler than the first theme and narrower 
in melodic range. The third theme is in the major mode and makes use of the spiritual melody, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. The development recalls the first and third themes. The recapitulation makes use of all three themes. This is followed by the coda, which concludes the movement. Here you can hear the introduction theme played pianissimo by the cellos. It consists of downward phrases. Here you can hear the opening theme. The first part of the theme consists of a motif with a dotted rhythm played by the horns. The remainder of this theme consists of a melody intoned by the woodwinds with slightly quicker rhythmic values, also with dotted rhythms. The horns enter mezzo forte and the woodwinds take up the remainder of the phrase at a piano dynamic. Here you can hear where the flute and oboe pick up a dance-like tune played piano. Here you can hear the swing low spiritual theme played by the flute piano.
here you can hear the recapitulation. The horns retake up the arpeggio motif from the beginning of the exposition with its dotted rhythms and a mezzo forte dynamic. This is then taken up by the woodwinds, piano, and then the oboes, and then the woodwinds, and then finally the strings, fortissimo. Here you can hear the return of the second theme, the dance-like tune played by the flute piano. This is then taken up by the other woodwinds and then taken up by the strings and eventually there is a crescendo up to a fortissimo dynamic. Here you can hear the return of the third theme, the swing low theme, played by the flute piano. This is then taken up by the violins. Here you can hear the coda played by the full orchestra, Fortissimo. One can hear the swing low theme return and the arpeggio motif from the beginning in the minor mode. The work ends with powerful repeated chords at a fortissimo dynamic. <laughs> 